Today's experiment is going to deal with the collection of gas over water by displacement. And what we're going to do is we're going to generate some gas in a reaction. And that gas is going to get bubbled into an inverted tube that is full of water. The gas is going to push that water out, changing the volume. And that's going to represent the amount of gas that was generated. And we're going to say for the purpose of this example that 57.3 milliliters of water was displaced. So try to remember that number. So the purpose of our experiment, again, is to measure the amount of gas that we collect at atmospheric pressure and room temperature. Those are sort of the conditions that we're working under. And we're going to compare that to the amount of gas that should have been made at standard temperature and pressure. So again, just for the purpose of this example, we're saying that 57.3 milliliters of gas was made. So here's the reaction we're using. We're going to put uh, some magnesium and hydrochloric acid to make magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. We're going to collect that gas. And we're going to use 0 0.070 grams of magnesium. So how many moles of hydrogen are going to be made? Let's figure that out. So we can use some simple stoichiometry to do that. And the, uh, the stoichiometry we use is there is off to the right. And we're going to make 0 0.00288 moles of hydrogen. Good. So what kind of volume does that represent? So if we're going to make some, let's figure out how much. At standard temperature and pressure, which is one atmosphere, or 760 millimeters mercury, and zero degrees Celsius, which is the same as 273 Kelvin, one mole of any gas occupies 22.414 liters of space. That's a conversion factor. We can work with that. So let's convert our number of moles into a volume by multiplying them two together. You can see how it cancels out over there on the right. And our theoretical yield, the amount of gas that we should make, is 0 0.0645 liters, which is the same as 64.5 milliliters. So let's uh, let's keep that number in mind. That's what we should actually make. So let's get the pressure of just the hydrogen gas that we made. So hydrogen's not the only gas that we made. Water gas is also present. And so the total pressure, according to Dalton's law of partial pressures, is equal to the sum of hydrogen gas and water gas. And our atmospheric pressure is our total pressure. So the way that we get that is either by reading a barometer somewhere in the room or by going online, checking weather underground, and finding out what the pressure is. And when I did that, I found that it was 765.81 millimeters mercury. And we measured the temperature of the water that we displaced, which was 19 degrees Celsius. And the pressure of water is 17 millimeters mercury at that temperature. So our total pressure, again, is the sum of those two things. So if I subtract the pressure of water from our total, I can get the pressure of just hydrogen. That's what the subtraction looks like. And it comes out to 748.81 millimeters mercury, which, when I round to the right number of significant figures, is 749 millimeters mercury. So let's use the combined gas law to see how much hydrogen would be made at STP. So again, we did this at atmospheric pressure and room temperature, and we want to change that to standard temperature and pressure. So this is the equation we use, the combined gas law, P1V1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. So plugging in the numbers where our ones are sort of the atmospheric conditions we did this in, and our twos are the standard temperature and pressure conditions we did this in, 749 times 57.3 over 292 is equal to 760 times the volume that we want to get over 273. Doing a little algebra and solving for volume two, we get 52.7 millimeters of um, gas actual. That is when we correct our, our volume for what it would be at STP, that's what we actually get. And so let's come to a conclusion. If we made 52.7 mils and we should have made 64.5 mils, we got 81% of what we should have gotten. So that tells us that we probably lost some gas somewhere. And some things to remember, when gas is collected over water, it's wet. So we need to track out the amount of water that's there. And the amount of water that's there depends on the temperature of the water. So we can subtract it. And this allows us to determine the volume of hydrogen gas. I hope you've enjoyed this. There's a lot here to do, so maybe just go back and rewatch this video. I'll see you in class.